Hi guys and welcome. A lot of you have been asking me about camping stoves and you probably know by now I don't like to spend a lot of money. I don't like to spend any money if I don't have to. So the best camping stove for me is the hobo stove. I picked up uh, this can on the trail so I'm picking up trash. Notice there's a bullet hole in there. Enter and exit 22 I think but but who knows, and for some reason there's the remnants of duct tape wrapped around here. That's not good, but oh well, it'll burn off eventually. Um, but anyway, I've, I've seen uh, lots of videos, people making hobo stoves, and most of them, they're using a cordless drill with a drill bit and then a hole saw, then they're using tin snips. Uh, and that's great, but are you going to have that stuff on the trail? If you were a, a hobo, which is an old name for a homeless person, I believe, you're going to have all that. If you're sleeping in a tent in the woods, you're going to have a uh, cordless drill. <laughs> Where are you going to plug in the charger? You know, do you have a hole saw? Um, so, my plan today is I've uh, got this old flea market knife that's all beat up from doing stuff like this. And uh, can I make the hobo stove with just a tin can I picked up on the trail and uh, flea market knife? So, let's picture this. It's like a little wood stove. Do you ever have a wood stove in your house? If so, then you have an advantage. If not, you can learn. But, uh, the bullet hole, which happens, the bullet holes, just happen to be on the bottom. That's actually good for it. That's part. That it's going to be incorporated as part of my stove. If not, I could just make them with the knife. But the theory is, you have a door to uh, load the wood in, and that also lets air in. But you want air on the bottom. So the theory is the bot air comes in the bottom and as it heats up it shoots up the top so here's your chimney so you want the tor door in the middle and kind of towards the bottom and I want to be a little bit careful not to cut myself but you see how I don't really need tools <laughs> Did I get caught somehow? All right. So, I could leave my door, I could break it off. Seem like that's going to break by itself. Uh, why not? We'll leave it like a little wood stove door for right now. So, I've got a couple of vent holes on the bottom. I'm thinking I'm wanting one here. So, I'm going to make a triangle. Oh, that is so rusty. I could just poke my thumb through there. I want to make one so I can show you how I do it. Well, I really don't need an extra vent hole here. I'm going to do it just to show you. Because he's got integrity here. When I'm making my own vent holes, that's what I do. Just make a little triangle. So, Meh. About the amount of ventilation I want. And you can experiment. You know, I'm skeptical about these claims of the super ultra rocket turbo stove. Jet rocket turbo super stove, whatever they call it. And because they give it this fabulous name and the advertising is good and they got a nice picture of it, 
you know, then they're charging you the big money. Whereas it can be your own engineer and through experimentation just decide what works for you. And some people bring in camp stoves, backpacking that uh, take tablets or uh, alcohol or some sort of fuel they bring with them. I mean, it just doesn't work for me because that's just added weight to carry. M meanwhile, I have literally tons. I mean, let's look around this here. You know, sticks. Right now, these are dry. If there's snow cover, then I'd be looking up here. This is in the wind, getting dry. There's things like that in the dead of winter. And I have literally tons of hobo stove fuel around here. Um, I don't need, even need an axe. I'm just using small twigs. I can use birch bark for a fire starter, but there's enough birch bark from dead trees. A lot of the trees have turned to dirt, but the bark is still there. It's still flammable. My fuel for the, for the whole time could possibly be birch bark. I've done that. You can cook things with just a boil water with just uh, birch bark. So why in the world do I want to uh, pump uh, fuel all the way here when I can just grab it as, as I need it? This is perfect. The wind dries it. See? Uh, and this is my this is my axe and my chainsaw. Scouting around for a minute, I didn't see any birch bark. I didn't look very long, no. So instead I have dried pine needles and these are fern fronds. Dead and dried up. See how well that does. See if that gets me started. Just like a wood stove that's containing the heat, and I have air holes along the bottom, chimney at the top, air goes in the bottom, heats up, shoots up the top. That is the technology. Now I'm burning off the duct tape that I didn't put on, it was just there from many years ago. Yeah, so don't. Don't cover it in duct tape, but I note so. This is a new hobo stove. Needs some modification. So, gloves good. It's an old pair of gloves. Need to squash them a little bit. Like that. And, uh, the reason being, so I can balance my canteen cup on top. I don't want to boil too much water because it just takes longer. So I'll be drinking out of this thing. So fill up the cup. I could heat it up in this, but then I'm going to burn my lips off. I'd have to wait for the cup to cool down. So, if possible, it's good to have more than one. And 
run down to coals. I'm going to need some more fuel. But here's the theory, anyway. That's a happy little stove. Carefully drop wood in there to the top. Just be careful. Starting to bubble. That boiled really well. Could toss more fuel in there, but no need. So now these on all that hut. But sometimes they are, depending if I still had a roaring fire going in there. So I could grab it with a glove, but I'll show you another technique. Vice grips. Makes a nice handle. And then I stir it with this certified stick. We gotta find a certified one. Gotta let that cool down for a minute. perfect drinking temperature. So that's your hobo stove. And why is it good? Well the fuel is free, easily available anywhere, almost anywhere, in eastern woodlands. And it's not fuel I have to carry with me, I just collect it where I am. Easy to cook over, boil water over. We boil a lot of water in order to purify it. And also, in this small stove now, I can bring the heat, bring the fire inside a small shelter or tent. But you have to be careful. You don't want to burn your shelter down and burn yourself. And also, another survival technique, though you have to be careful, is let's say uh, you don't have a shelter. You just uh, have uh, a poncho. And uh, I can drape the poncho over the uh, the stove if the flames aren't coming out too high. Again, you have to know how to do it. But uh, if it's life or death, or frostbite or not, I can stop even if uh, there's snow covering everything. Got a small fire going with my hands. Got the dexterity back that I need. Or if I huddle over it, heat rises. And again, you don't want to burn yourself. So, uh, not necessarily recommending it to anyone. It, you have to learn how to do it uh, safely. And some of these things are survival techniques. So the alternative is injury, injury or death. You know, but a survival stove. How how could I possibly have one in a shelter? Well, other things are calling me, and unfortunately, I got to leave the woods. But I'll be back. And God willing, we'll find the time actually build a shelter. Maybe maybe after we have snow cover. Show you how it's done. Shouldn't be long now. And the, the two techniques working together, the, the hobo stove that you get for free. Hey, build a heated tent for free. That would be a challenge. 
so stick with me if you haven't subscribed yet uh, subscribe and there's a little bell you know you click on the bell then you get notified so if you like this content you could you could see more and I thank you for joining me and I hope to see you again soon the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all amen Revelation 22 21